Time switches. What we've got there then on the wall in this uh, video is two time switches. They're both the same make and model. It's just that I've got two of them there to show the uh, the different specification plates and cases that these time switches that can be accommodated in them. What we're looking at there then is the Horseman VMK7 SRS. With this one, unlike the number 4 and the number 5, this one is a rate changer. This also means that not only can it switch a load, it can also trigger a rate change on a dual tariff electricity meter. Such instruments can be... For example, the Sangamo Western S309.2, a GEC C11B2, or a Sangamo Schlumberger SBA02. There are other makes and models of dual tariff electricity meter available. For the Horstman VMK7 SRS, the switching capacity is 80 amps. And for the little auxiliary contact, which is associated with the rate change, it is 2 amps. The synchro motor in these require 200 to 250 volts. And the most important bit, of course, is the alternation frequency at 50 hertz in order to get it to run at the correct speed. With these time switches, because they are mechanical, they do have a spring reserve mechanism in them and the spring reserve is good for 15 days of power loss and the spring reserve can be wound up with little square shank in the middle of the clock faces we shall be zooming in now and taking a look at these time switches as it can be seen there then there are two types of case which can be uh, suited for the VMK7. Either time switch will fit into either case. The one to the left has got a one piece polycarbonate front case. And the one to the right has got a Bakelite black front case with a polycarbonate window inserted into the front of it of which is held in place by five screws the advantage with the one piece polycarbonate front case is that they are a little more tougher and immune to taking knocks and bumps let's uh, zoom in on specification plates for the time switch on the left There it is then. Now this one, it does have a bit of an incorrect detailing on the, where it says type. And it says in there 7D SRS. We will be looking at one of those later on in another video because I do own one. And we shall be having a look at what the difference is between a 7 SRS and a 7D SRS. This time switch was uh, X electric board stock and the previous owner was Southeast electric board as can be seen on the bottom of the specification plate there where it says SEEB or SEEB. It can be also seen that the, uh, the capacities for the time switch are detailed on the specification plate where it says main circuit 80 amps and auxiliary circuit is 2 amps. I have reason to believe that the numbering in brackets for each contact is the inductive load. So it would be 12 amp inductive for the main circuit and half an amp inductive for auxiliary circuits. Also on specification plate you can see a little lever, lever sticking through there where it says off, auto and on. 
that is a manual option but having said that these in uh, time switches are installed by electricity boards and are sealed and are not accessible to the electricity user the clock face then there it is as it can be seen there's a little square winding shank in the middle of the clock face and that is for winding the spring reserve normally speaking these time switches would have been installed in economy 7 installations or economy 10 installations and as such these would have been set for either 12 o'clock at midnight to turn on and 7 o'clock in the morning to switch off or maybe 11 to 6 or something some variants where you would have received seven hours of off-peak electricity and uh, off-peak cheap rates with these when they switch on it activates the off-peak load and the cheap rate electricity at the same time the specification plate in that is basically a sticky label and has been put in there and then have had the Horseman logo on it printed in green with black print on that specification plate then where it says clamping screw and to the left or the right that is in reference to some screws which hold the time switch into place because when these time switches are installed into the case you have to tighten up a couple of screws for it to hold onto the main load carrying pins so that it carries the current safely. These time switches they are removable from the case. Uh, they just unplug basically. We shall be having a look at that in a moment or two. Let's look at the next one across them. With this uh, specification plate inside this one it is actually a metallic specification plate and uh, is green coloured with the infill being silver and the details are actually embossed into the specification plate with this one then the X owner was NWEB or Northwest Electricity Board this one's got an owner's number on it of P00548 I will see if I can uh, advance the zoom a bit further so you can read that there it is P00548 ah oh, there we go the focus has adjusted automatically that is most wonderful again this time switch has got the same characteristics 80 amp switching capacity with 2 amp rate change trigger once again it needs 200 to 250 volts with 50 hertz alternation frequency for the synchro motor it once again has the option with off auto or on but again these time switches are closed and sealed and are not available to the electricity user to set or operate this time switch it has the square winding shank in the middle of the face again for winding up the spring reserve and on the top there's the screw there which holds closed the front case and just to the side there you can see that there's a little hole for passing through an anti-tamper seal this is so that the time switch cannot be tampered with or off-peak electricity can be obtained fraudulently similarly the other one has a similar setup with uh, the fixing screw there and the little hole around the side for which you pass through an anti-tamper seal what I'm going to do now is open up the front cases and we'll do that in another section hold on there a moment it will jump straight on and there we go so as it can be seen the front cases just hinge open and that then reveals the time switches inside with the one on the right there is a sticky label in there which details when the uh, time switch was first manufactured there's a little sticky label just there as you can see this time switch was manufactured in January 1971 
if this camera tripod will behave. There it is. So, first manufactured in January 1971 then. Unfortunately, the other one is missing that uh, date label. But it does just say in it, uh, tested 88. So that was when that was last tested. If I bring the camera down a bit, you'll notice that that one I've raised the carry handle on it so that you can see that the time switch unplugs and just in there you can see there is a red screw and that is in reference to that clamping screw okay so you can see that it says clamping screw and around the side you can see a red screw a red plastic screw the screw head is plastic but the actual threaded section which bolts into the main terminal block it's actually metallic loosening those screws you can take hold of that handle and then just pull on the time switch and it uh, disconnects from the base there is a pin base on the back of those time switches and we shall be having a look at that in a moment it's the same for the one with the white specification plate it just loosen those clamping screws which cannot be seen in this one and just pull on that handle and it unplugs from the base with these time switches you do make to have to make sure that they are in the off position before you pull them because if there's 80 amps going through that and you pull it out from the base uh, I wouldn't mind betting there would be quite a uh, reasonable arc flash come out of that case and uh, that could be quite blinding and uh, have a bit of a loud bang to it there we are that shows the time switch is removed from the bases we shall zoom in now and have a look at the terminals that are in there we shall be observing the case that's on the right but from what I show it applies to both of them there we are then as you can see we can now see the two uh, plastic headed clamping screws the one to the left uh, unfortunately has got splits in it so that could fail any time soon again these time switches are from the early 1970s so it's very well used and as you can see that's got splits and cracks in it and goodness knows what else it is known that uh, some of these do crumble to pieces and then the time switch needs to be removed in a nice controlled fashion uh, the one to the, to the case to the right you can see this little silver stub just there uh, that one has actually crumbled to pieces and as such there's no clamping screw in that anymore uh, for it to be tightened up the other one's in there just there but uh, that one's still okay or it appears to be, yeah, it, yeah. you can see that it's appearing to split on there. I'm using the digital zoom at the minute, so that picture is, uh, the quality's gone down very slightly. Let's go back to optical zoom. There it is then. But that one started to crack and split. And there's the other one right there. Okay then, right. What we've got there then on the terminals is that large hole right there if i zoom right in into it that large hole uh it does appear to have a split in it which it has because that hole needs to expand and shrink in order to clamp the uh the plug pin which goes inside there the two holes to the left of it are the terminal screws where the, uh, you can put a screwdriver down there to tighten up the terminal screws for the big old chunky power cable that's going to go in there just down a bit we've got that one that's actually a terminal for the synchro motor okay you can see the little pin hole there where the pin for the synchro motor plugs in and to the right of that is two terminal screws for tightening up the cable for the synchro motor the next one along then just up there a bit there it is you can see another pin hole there and two terminal screws below it that is for the rate change trigger pin okay that terminal is only available on the VMK7 
on the VMK5 and the VMK4 and even the VMK2, that location is blanked off. Just inside there, you can see letter E there, and there's an arrow pointing up to it. Inside that hole, right there, uh, there's a terminal screw down there, and that is for the earth terminal. And on these, the earth terminal is that there, that metal part sticking up. When you plug the time switch in there, the metal case of the time switch rubs up against that and provides an earth connection. Just there then, we've got yet another pinhole for the synchro motor and the two terminal screws to the left of it. And up from that we have then got, there's another big hole there for the 80 amp plug pin to go in. And to the right of that, once again, there's two terminal screws for tightening up the big old cable that goes in there. Typically on these, the conductor size would be 25 millimeter. Just down on the floor, I have placed both of the time switches and we shall have a look at the pin base that's on them. There they are then. I've placed one so it's uh, facing towards us and the other one is facing against the wall. We shall be observing the one which is facing the wall. The terminal base on them is both the same. There we are then. You can see that there. At the bottom of the pin base there are two little wee skinny pins. That's for the Zinco motor. Just up a bit from that we got two big chubby pins and they are for the big loading, uh, 80 amp loading capacity. And there's a big old thick bus bar going between them. Okay, just there we've got the big 80 amp contact right there, just underneath that chubby pin. Okay, the 80 amp contacts in there, which, which at 240 volts can take 19,200 watts. There's a little wee contact just there, and that is for the rate change trigger. Just there, that's for the rate changer. And on that brass strip there's another pin right in the middle there, and that's the rate change trigger pin. Once again, that's only there on the VMK7. The VMK5, the 4 and the 2 does not have that pin. Those yellow wires there, they go into that case and provide power for the synchro motor. There's a little cord clamp there just at the top right hand of the pin base. There is a little fuse for internal fuse for the synchro motor, and that is 5 amp. And that writing above it, it says Ray Roll, and that's the maker of the fuse. That's R E Y R O L L E. Some of these time switches do have an internal fuse, and some don't. I've not yet figured out why some do and some don't. So that's the pin base on a Horstman VMK7 SRS. You can see that the uh, back can on that does is quite a depth. Okay, so there it is. Again, the pin base on that one with the white specification plate will be exactly the same. Okay, so let's uh, now place them back into the cases. And there we are then. You can see that the time switches are now back in the case. I've hinged and closed and tightened up the screws. For the more observant view, you have, will have noticed that I have reinstated the time switches into the cases in the reverse position. This is so that, uh, just to show that the time switches can be put into either case. A little bit later on then, we shall be doing more time switches. Uh, but for now, I'd like to say thanks for tuning in to watch this one. And you have been watching a video on Horstman VMK7 SRS Rate Changer Time Switch.